Hello, and welcome to Japanese Craft Beer Reviews. Today, we have kind of a special edition. Uh, we're going to look at two beers in one video. And I'm here today with Beering Al, who uh, has been a beer friend of mine for many, many years and really, really knows his stuff. He's also quite an expert on whiskey and wine as well. And he is going to work with me to review two beers. And the two beers are dun, 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 these two. And they are Kidin Ichiban Shibori and Kidin Ichiban Shibori Tore Tate Hoppu 2023. So uh, I have had both of these, but I haven't had the original for quite a while. Recently, I reviewed this one, uh, and and Al asked me, what's the difference between the two? And I said, well, I haven't had the original one for quite some time. So he suggested, let's review them together and see. And I expect this is going to be quite challenging. Uh, <laughs> but Al, would you like to add something here? Yeah, I was just, it's one of those things that, you know, we often go by memory. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not sure it's really any different from the original or not. And really, but the only way to know is to let's do them side by side and, and see what we think. Uh, I haven't had either one of these for a long time. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, my palate is fresh here today. So I'm, I'm excited to get into this. Okay. Okay. So uh, first, though, a little bit about uh, Kidin uh, Company. And Kidin was established in 1907. Uh, they bought the Japan Brewery Company, which started in uh, 1885. Uh, and they've expanded now into a very large company. They have only uh, not only food and beverage, uh, which includes uh, the beer, uh, which they're probably most famous for, but also health sciences and pharmaceuticals as well. Yeah. Uh, all of the Japanese major brewing companies have expanded into other fields. Um, they don't just do beer. Uh, Suntory, for example, is famous for whiskey, but they also have a very large pharmaceutical concern as well. Now, Ichiban Shibori, this main original beer, uh, mm -hmm. was launched in 1990. And the uh, selling point for this was that they use the what they call the first press. And I think we would call it maybe the first runnings uh, in brewing terms. But they say the first press of the wort, uh, mm. whereas most brewers use the second press as well, the uh, second runnings of the uh, through the Lotter tune. And they claim that using the second press will add more bitterness and body. So this should be a pure, cleaner uh, beer. Mm. Well, uh, <clears throat> we will see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. I, I wonder if that press, you know, I think the first press idea might come from sake because they, I mean, sake, they have that idea as well. I see. So the first yeah. the one would be the first press. Kind of the more expensive, the more special would be that the first pressing. Yeah. Uh, and they'd have the uh, kind of the, the sake and the maybe some of the remaining rice might be in bags that they would squeeze. And that would be the Second. kind of the first pressing. Or first they'd pressing. actually just hang it and let it drip down wow. kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think, yeah, maybe they're taking that kind of a, uh, an approach to this beer or claim to be. Um, yeah, Young Shibori, uh, they uh, have many, many varieties, not just this original one, but they also make a wheat one, a dark one. Uh, and in fact, in 2015, they made 47 different varieties, uh, one for each <laughs> prefecture in Japan, uh -huh. okay. uh, yeah. and specifying that uh, the beer for this prefecture would go well with the food specialties from that. For example, for Osaka, yes. uh, takoyaki, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Uh, and I had several of them, and there wasn't really a lot of difference. But yeah, I'm sure they, uh, I'm sure they, uh, you know, varied the recipes 47 times for each uh, individual flavor profile of each prefecture. Who knows? Who knows? But they haven't done <laughs> that since. Um, yeah. And Ichiban Shibori, this one, uh, Tori Kate Hoku, was first launched in 2004, and I'll put a a, a picture up of that. 
uh, of the different varieties. So on the Kidding website, you can see uh, the different label art for each year. And this is the mm -hmm. 2023 version. Uh, mm -hmm. And they use uh, hops from the Tono region of Iwante Prefecture. Uh, and and uh, it is a limited beer, limited beer, very definitely. On rate beer, uh, the ratings are divided in two sections, one from 2004 to 2008, and then from 2009 to the present. And the reason is before 2009, uh, they use adjuncts into in the beer. Oh. After mm. 2009, it's an all malt beer. Um, rate beer, uh, rate beer for the 2009 on, there are only 26 ratings. Uh, and mm. uh, the average is 2.89 out of five. Not too high. 32 percentile for all beers, uh, for all beers on rate beer, and 89 percentile for its style. It's considered on rate beer a pale lager. And on untapped, Ichiban Shibori Tori Tate Hop has uh, 2,023 ratings, and the average is higher at uh, uh, 3.31. Ichiban Shibori, oh, yeah. regular one. Uh, has two uh, 2,839 ratings on rate beer. The average is 2.8 out of five and four percentile for all beers on rate beer, 29 percentile for its style pale lager. So not terribly encouraging. Mm. Untapped, Ichiban Shibori has uh, 342,617 ratings and the average is 3.14. Why so many? Well, uh, they're including uh, the beer, which is called Ichiban, which is exactly the same beer, but for export. And in Japan, yeah. it's called Ichiban Shibori. So this is right. wide. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, so it is the same thing. Okay, so that's enough about Kirin, I think. Um, oh, except for uh, the uh, label here. What is Kirin? It is this mythological animal uh, from uh, Japanese and I assume uh, Chinese mythology and it is a, a unicorn and well, you don't see the yeah I guess you can see the horn on there uh, and oh, yeah. apparently is a sacred creature in Japanese mythology and apparently its cry is musical so <clears throat> it makes music when it cries and it has circular footprint can walk on water and also can walk on grass without making a print whatsoever. So, uh -huh. so it is associated uh, traditionally with fertility as well. So, so a very auspicious sort of symbol for the company kitty. Okay, okay, enough there. Al, what do you think? Right. Should we get into well, it? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, yeah. So it's going to be interesting because both of the rating sites suggest there's definitely a difference and maybe even significant given how large those numbers are. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, see if we can, what we find, what do we find different? I'm curious Okay. as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Shall so we? What we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to look at these two beers uh, at the same time. So we'll take a look at the appearance, the aroma, the flavor, body, etc. Okay, and talk about them. Okay, so let's okay. pour out. I don't really have the proper glass. Try to get somewhat the same level of. Oh, got a nice. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to hold the regular original in my left hand and the Tori Tate Hoppu. Oh, by the way, Tori Tate, I'm sorry, we should have explained this here. Tori Tate Hoppu means freshly picked hops. And what it implies is that it's a fresh hop beer. Mm. In actuality, uh, what happens is they go to the fields, uh, pick the hops, and flash freeze them, and then mm. transport them back to the brewery. So it's not really okay. Exactly a, so they don't really just throw them right away from the fields into no. the beer. To... 
Yeah, apparently, I mean, it should be within 24 hours, 24 hour turnaround to make a real fresh hop beer. Okay, so in my left hand, I have the original. Likewise from you. In my right hand, I have the Poritape Hopu. Hmm. And I have to put them against a white background here. Do you see a difference? I, I see a very slight difference in carbonation. Toritate seems to have a little bit more. But other than that, no. It's They're both kind of light gold straw with a very filmy head. Yeah, they're pretty close. The Toritate might be very a slightly lighter. I think I'm getting a little bit more carbonation in the regular, but that's probably due to the glass, you know, be, be. like maybe not thoroughly cleaned or something like that. It's, okay. 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 So let's take a look at the original. All right. Little. Grassy, gra light grassy hops. Hmm. Very light. Yeah, I associate that with the like a German. I don't know if it's Tottinger or you know which uh, Halle Tower or, but I associate yeah. that with definitely German hops. Anyway. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yeah, I think they do import probably import some for this. This is a major beer for them. It's not a special yeah one at all. So I would yeah, it's kind of earthy. Could be how you mentioned grassy. I get some earthy too. Yeah, earthy, lightly grassy. Hmm. Not much citrus. Yeah. Kind of a light, very light roasted malt. Mm -hmm. Not 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 bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about flavor? Okay. <clears throat> Hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of body. It's a little on the light body, definitely kind of light body, yeah. but it's got yeah. definitely has some malt, but very clean. Hmm. Light malt. Kind of pilsner, light pilsner like. And the hops. The hops are very tiny tracks, very, very tiny little grassy tracks. I yeah. Think. Yeah. It's, I think it's really balanced. Both the, the quantity of malt and the quantity of hops are, you know, let's say not over the top. No, <laughs> kind of restrained, to put it politely. Um, but they are balanced. I have to give them credit for that. I think they balanced it okay. Yeah. I think that's what they're aiming for, too, with this hmm. idea of first pressing. They want to clean pure beer without too much bitterness or body. Yeah. So they claim. Yeah, the aftertaste is, is that is as you say, it's clean. It's you kind of get you get just a very light, you know, malt and yeah. bitterness in your play at first. Then the malt I get a little bit of malt more later on. By the end there it's um just some slightly lingering malt and bitterness, but very mild kind yeah. of on the top. Mm -hmm. Easy, you know, yeah. Very, very easy uh, drinking, smooth. Yeah. Yeah. It does have some flavor. Uh it's very moderate, but uh but yeah, it's there. I think I like the aroma the best, you know. The aroma is kind of promising. It does kind of promise the you know a uh, German beer. Yeah, yeah, nice lager. Yeah. I'm gonna cleanse my palate here real quickly and then okay. let's try the uh Try the Toritate Hopu. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Toritate. Oh. Hmm. Wait a minute. That's well, quite different. No. Yeah, it is different for sure. <sighs> Wow, that was a little bit of a surprise here. I'm I'm going to clear my palate too. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Yeah, it might. <clears throat> I think definitely we've got a bit more hop in this one. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. I think they, uh, the hops are much more evident in this one. Yeah. I'm going to hold off on commenting for a moment just because I'm getting something that's maybe might be a little unusual. What's that? In the aroma? Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, there's a difference for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think the hops are, are definitely coming out. This is a little stinky. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this does not smell. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. It's not such a German. Definitely. It's yeah, it's not recognizably German. So uh, I don't know the exact hops you know, it, that these are, it, but I assume they are what are called Ibuki hops, um, which are kind of a descendant mm. of Zatz and, uh, and a German variety, I think. Uh, or huh. maybe, I'm sorry, maybe the uh, Sorachi hop as well. So they they blend. Oh really? They you know apparently oh, interesting. The different hops. Yes. And this one definitely I think has some zots in the in the background. Yeah, it's um I tell you what first came to mind for me was <laughs> cat pea and New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> So, right. but you know, yes. not in a bad way. It's not like a really strong cat pee or anything, but it's, you know, sometimes Sauvignon Blanc has this kind of, I don't know, um, what do they call it? Uh, kind of a savory um, herbal uh, character. And I think I would I say that's kind of, yeah. Just, <laughs> what's that? I have two cats. You have two cats. So, one of them's right here sleeping. Okay. Okay. Well, you could. Right. You're the so, expert on cat pee. So. So this is clearly a. I mean, this is a Japanese hop from Iwate Prefecture. Hmm. And uh, I think it's not quite as pleasant as the uh, the original, in my in my estimation. Hmm. Okay. It's different. It's really quite different. It's not as well balanced. Um, no. The palate mm -hmm. is a little thinner. It doesn't have quite as much malt and. Okay. Maybe they're featuring the hop. I'm guessing they're featuring the hops. Otherwise, if they had too much, maybe I think you might have suggested or other people have suggested that, mm. um, you know, <laughs> they don't have a lot of these hops. And therefore, you know, if they put too much malt, it'll just swamp the hop. So maybe they're trying, they've dialed back the amount of malt. Mm, 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 mm. Might make sense economically, too. If they're producing their own hops, it's probably very, very expensive. Yeah, yeah, they do have so, a big project up there in uh, in Iwate. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, like you say, it's not as well balanced at all. And yeah, it it's more about the hops for sure. Terribly pleasant, you know. Uh, uh, but it's interesting. It's not. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean. It's, maybe there's some citrus on the end too it's a little bit um yeah, I don't know, sharp, like yeah a little bit sharper fruit kind of citrus note um but yeah even on the nose i think i'm getting a little bit of like a lemon like or maybe more of a grapefruit yeah white grapefruit uh-huh uh-huh yeah well i i am kind of surprised i thought there would not be much difference here but clearly Clearly, uh, they do have some, <laughs> some differences. Yeah. And this one's got a little bit in uh, that acidity, like that citrus kind of note. I mean, it's a little bit more lip smacking. Um, you know, it one suggests one. acidity, makes it kind of mouth watering, which I think it's more so than the, the regular, the original. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's quite different. I mean, I'm kind of surprised. I didn't expect it to, I was expecting it to be, I think we both thought it was going to be maybe hard to distinguish. Yeah, but it clearly it's not. Yeah, I get the I get the acidity thing. It's kind of like a little saltiness or, or slight metallic edge on it in the back. 
Yeah, yeah, you can say that. And it makes your mouth kind of water a little bit. That's kind of like in wine, when you drink wines, if your mouth is watering, like if you have a Riesling, you know, you, you want to drink, it tends to, the, the positive side of that is you want to drink more of it. Mm. Something that's mouth watering. Drink more and give me, take yeah. yeah. It's interesting you're coming up with a lot of wine comparisons here. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't going that's into it, so expecting to do that. And, but... and, and, and mm. Riesling. Yeah, and I think that I th and I think that brings it around to the maybe my word would be herbal, you know, um, something. I you could probably say that of German hops too, but the German hops do tend to be like you say more maybe grassy and earthy. Yeah. Um, this and this more... this is not as much earthy as um, no maybe herbal and citrusy or something. I'm... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, citrus. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick comparison. Mm. Me too, left and right here. Wow. Yeah, going back to the original smells like bread now. The yeah. malt on the nose. This one is more like a like a seltzery, hoppy seltzer sort of thing. Oh yeah. That's you know, yeah, it's I've heard time and time again, if you really want to know something, do it side by side. Um because now I really taste the malt coming through in the more original, strongly in the original. on the Ichiban Shibori, yeah. Yeah, so this one has. Definitely the malt was more apparent. The hops are gentler yeah. uh, and grassier. Yeah. And this one. Hmm. Toritate. Yeah, it's a uh, hmm. malt is is kind of overshadowed by these. Would you call the hops again? Kind of acidic or yeah, herbal. I think herbal. sort of a herbal or uh, like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. You know, the kind of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the body is yeah. thinner too to me now. I I think, I think it's actually they literally have less malt in it. I'm guessing. That just because of the body, it could be a variation on the malt, maybe. Could be. But you I don't actually assume, know. I would assume that they would try to, you know, basically make the same kind of beer, just add the, add the, the uh, fresh. Well, I hops. wonder. That's an interest. That's this is where we would be great to have somebody from Kirin being able to tell us what True. they, if it's exactly True. the recipe and all they do is add the hops and the hops yeah. kind of. Uh, you know, the impression you get is that it's less malty, but the mold amount is actually the same. That would be interesting. The, yeah, yeah. It could I, be. I have written to brewers on occasion, and, and some have replied. Uh, and Kudin, I mean, the big brewers do not put a lot of information on the website, uh, unless it's right. something special they want to you know, really tell you about. In this case, they, they talk about the process, but not exactly the ingredients, and they don't even mention the name of the hops. No, yeah, know. yeah, it'd be interesting to know. I mean, if they yeah, do, they just would. simply add, replace the hops, or is there more going on? I'm, I, I kind of suspect that they're actually cutting back on the malt a little bit, but maybe not. But maybe that's just, or yeah, yeah, could be. Um, and yeah. maybe, well, yeah, yeah, okay. It's hard to know. It's really hard to know. Um. Just because the body, like you say, the mouth feel is so different, and you know it's definitely yeah. very clearly maltier. Oh yeah, this is it's weird because it's now it's almost making me think of um, of like a Belgian, you know, because of that maybe the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Just a little, you know, you thinking of, uh, of the Torritate. I mean, just because uh, you know we've had many a. Uh, beer by Kyoto Brewing, which has uses Belgium yeast. And there is that note of kind of grapefruit in sometimes in the in their Belgian IPAs, maybe, yeah. 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 Or saisons too. Hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I have to say I definitely prefer the original Ichiban Shibori mm. to this one. Um 
Yeah, and it really is interesting to see how they are, you know, how, how different they actually are. Yeah, I'm surprised. In, uh, in every every aspect, aroma, flavor, and yeah. body as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, uh, you know, your viewers will have comments or like to do a, their comparison, see what they have to say about it. Yeah. Um, I think that Ichiba or the um, Toritake, the special hop one, I think it se because it seems lighter, I almost think it would be more of a, even more of a summer beer than the, than the uh -huh. standard. Uh -huh. Um you know, it's got that kind of because the citrus is kind of a refreshing character, and yeah. But this is released in the fall, right? It's just been released. Well, hot picking time, so so. Uh, yeah, that makes you know, sense. Yeah, so over and they're picking the hops, yeah. and getting it into the beer. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I I think if you're if you're into the seasonal or if you know you like lighter things during summer, the Tori Tate might be the one you'd go for, uh, possibly, yeah. even though it's uh maybe not as balanced it's but uh, yeah the uh drink by date is june of 2024 <laughs> okay so if you keep it in your refrigerator you can just and just, you're in just japan the wire <laughs> yeah <laughs> just barely yeah well okay. thank you global okay. global warming will make it uh, yeah, go warm and make it happen you can yeah. probably try it in like may or warming will kill all the hops so <laughs> mm, yeah Okay. Any final yeah, thoughts nice. about this, Al? Well, uh, no, I think it's uh, insightful. Uh, would you change your score? What's your score on the Kirian? And what's your, what would score would you get it just off the top of your head for the, uh, the Tori Tate? Uh, let's see. Always find these hard to. Uh, yeah, I don't remember my score for the regular Ichiban Tori Tate. Uh, I gave 3.1. No. 3.1. But now I with the side by side comparison wants me to lower the score for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, I have to admit, I mean, Kieran, uh, yeah, I I've, I've always kind of liked Kieran. Um, and I was going to wonder if I had sort of a pro Kieran bias, but um I think it's pretty decent. The their Ichiban Shibori is a, a decent beer. Fine beer. It's a fine beer. Yeah. yeah well, I think one of the quests would be fun to do is find out what's the best mass produced, you know, all malt, you know, genuine beer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Japan. I think uh, I've got a I've got a candidate in mind. I won't say what it is, but maybe if we can get a group together, we can Thank do a, a showdown of it begins with M yeah. and, and M and D. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. Like that. It's yeah. got a doctor in yeah. the label. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we could include several different beers in that. I think one of them would be uh, uh, a, you know, some variant of Yebisu. Okay. Certainly premium malts. Uh, okay. Premium malts, uh, definitely. Okay. And, uh, for kidding, kidding, what do we have? I don't. Hmm, that's a good one. Uh, you yeah, well, I guess you know. It could be Ichiban Shibori. I mean, it's not yeah. a bad call, I don't think. Yeah, Asahi has one called Jukuse, which is kind of a premium. But uh, yeah, in general, Asahi and Kirin, in my opinion, are behind Suntory and Sapporo in terms of their, mm -hmm. you know, beer exploration. And certainly, they don't put out as many beers uh, as uh -huh. as Suntory okay. and Sapporo. Yeah. Okay, well, excellent idea. Yeah. I think we should. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll have to discuss, you know, what the premium to versus, a, yeah. To a, a kind of a death match. Or... Yeah, sure. Japanese uh, beer death match will we'll taste all 100. Let them punch it yeah. out. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds well, good. Thank you very well, much, Al, for, uh, well, you know, for joining me in this. And uh, I think well, we did learn thank some you. today. And I yeah. hope viewers learned some too today. This beer, Ichiban, of course, is available in many countries. Uh, unfortunately, the Tori Tate Hop, I doubt it's going to be exported. It is, as it claims here on the label, it is a very limited beer. Yeah. And might be, might be an Omiyage if you're on a budget and need to take something back to uh, relatives right. if you're visiting Japan. Yeah. Visiting Japan, you may want to bring one back. Okay. It's Japan. a genuine seasonal, you know. Okay. Well, All thank right. You. Thank you very much. And, My pleasure. And please do subscribe to the channel. Leave us some comments. Uh, tell us what you think about these beers if you've had them. Okay. 
We'd like to hear from you. Okay, well, that is it for today. Bye-bye.